How's it going everyone? Welcome to Pawfology. So I'm just on my way to get a cup of coffee uh, at Caffeine Coffee. It's a coffee shop uh, in downtown Indy. And so I'm just walking there right now. How's your day going? Are you having a good Monday or Tuesday or whenever you watch this? Let me know. I'm walking by uh, the Cunningham Group restaurant group. Cunningham is like a, uh, they own a bunch of restaurants in downtown Indy. So a lot of fancy restaurants. They own Vita, which is that way. They own Livery, which is a really great restaurant. Yeah, so they're just super fancy restaurants. And I guess that's their complex. Their uh, Caffeine Coffee is a pretty small coffee shop. I don't really come here often because I'm a Calvin Fletcher boy, but I'm just gonna stop by here, get a cup of coffee, vlog a little bit, talk about whatever. This is a, uh, a well, they claim to be a third wave coffee shop, which most coffee shops are third wave. Just means they use specialty coffee beans, so. Man, it is freezing. So like, uh, first wave was like uh, 1800s to 1970. Just general whatever coffee, mainly all burnt coffee that just tasted probably all the same. Your Folgers, your whatever. Then you got a uh, second wave was like 1970 to 2000. Think of Starbucks Frappuccinos, just trying to make the most money you possibly can make at a coffee shop. And then now, since the 2000s, you've had like uh, third wave coffees. So that's your specialty coffee beans, your more ethical coffee shops that try to uh, give profit to the farmers, stuff like that. So, so that's what I'm doing. I'm going here. Man, I did not know it was going to be this cold. It was pretty sunny this weekend. But now it feels like it's like 32, 33. Kind of windy. Sometimes my friend comes here and works. But I don't know if he is here today. So there's caffeine. It's right behind Circa. Hopefully they're open. Watch them not be open. Uh, this says they're open. Okay. I don't know if I'm allowed to film in this. I'm gonna put my mask on. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go in recording, and if someone says something, I guess I'll turn it off. Hold on. Okay. There's their menu. I've had their Spanish latte. It's pretty good. I got a Nueva Simonelli. All right, I'll, I'll be right back. Hey, thank you. You too. Oop. So I just got a regular cup of coffee from Caffeine, pretty small coffee shop pretty cool place they're in these trucking or old truck businesses or something maybe a warehouse or something so they're just over there cool coffee shop lady was super nice they have some treats as well a lot of people go there just to work because they just work they might live in this area 
there's a neighborhood down here a lot of people live in so Lockerbie I think sometimes it's just an easy coffee shop to go to so yeah they they open up at 8 which is a little late for me so I, n I normally do not get coffee in the morning so mainly the only coffee shops that are open at, at that time of day uh, are Starbucks so I mean when I wake up at the time I wake up the only place really open is Starbucks so but now I'm going back to my apartment and uh, I'll get back to work down here is let me just show you this that building right there is a diamond store that taller building and there's a loft on top that you could rent or buy maybe it was buy I think it was like four hundred thousand dollars five hundred thousand dollars maybe so it's a cool little diamond store I know some people get their diamonds there local place and yeah so hmm what else am I doing I don't know what else I'm doing today besides working it's a pretty dreary whatever day gonna make dinner later tonight gonna watch some people's vlogs I watched the Mandalorian already this weekend so that's a great show I know Peter was talking about a documentary on HBO uh, murder on Long Beach or something like that I might start that so I started missing uh, the documentary about missing children in Atlanta that was pretty good I, I really like mine hunter and mine hunter season two was about the missing children in Atlanta and the Atlanta murderer so man I'm so excited for mine hunter season three I don't know when it comes out but I'm so excited do you guys watch anything on Netflix what do you watch on Netflix what are you watching right now let me know down below I'm always looking for new shows I uh yeah I, I so I've been watching that my I kind of want to I want to dive deep into a show right now you know I want to get something that I watch something that I can get invested into so that's what I'm doing that's what I'm thinking about well I'm gonna go inside I might be back later I'll see you guys very soon bye Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. So my friend Milky Way Matthew, who's doing the Peter Mon vlog challenge, he's almost finished with it, asked me to do a video or just talk about, quickly talk about the uh, economics of nostalgia. And I think that's quite an interesting topic. Um, so I, I started reading a little bit about it. And um, yeah, it's crazy to see what companies market to us uh, through by using nostalgia. So let me just read you the definition of nostalgia and we'll get started. So it's the definition is a sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place with a happy personal association. And it's it's used a lot. I mean, one of the first companies that I think of, and I, I know I talk about this company a lot, but it is Coke. I mean, Coke uses nostalgia and all of their commercials, that feeling of a maybe a happy place or the past, especially around the holidays, um, you think of, you see, they just have the best marketing. I mean, it, they don't just use this, but they use all types of marketing, but one of their main one is nostalgia. And so also another company that I think of is uh, Cracker Barrel and that it's not necessarily as dramatic as maybe Coke or some other companies but when you walk into a Cracker Barrel they're doing their best to bring you to a the past of maybe a place that you liked to go to like your grandma or grandpa's house it's definitely the history feel to it and it's definitely an emotional cozy happy place and so they're selling that to you yeah, it's it's so fascinating and I, you really wonder how that affects us right now um, during COVID stuff is not exactly the happiest but companies are able to possibly take advantage of that by making you remember the happy times and you connect that with that product to get you to purchase it 
quite fascinating, very interesting. I think also, you know, they do this with movie franchises. For example, uh, Star Wars. I mean, that is a straight up nostalgic marketing feel to it. Mandalorian, same thing. I mean, it's Star Wars, but even I was also thinking even Disney Plus for my generation, it's it's all about the movies of the past. I mean, you got Lion King, Tarzan, whatever, whatever on there. All the movies I grew up with, maybe, you know, all in one place. That's their marketing to get you to purchase their product. Um, even Nickelodeon, I would say, has a, you know, is it called Nick at Night? All of their old TV shows at night that... Not theirs, but just older TV shows. Very nostalgic feel. So it's it's a really interesting uh, emotion to use, and you know, f- for consumers to purchase products. Not even that. Just in any way, like if you're giving a speech, you can use that that some form of nostalgia to get y- your speech to be more interesting, or whatever you're doing. Maybe you're teaching a lesson to someone older who can feel that. Even kids can feel it, you know, going back to the days when blah, 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 blah. They can relate to that in some way. So, yeah, so that's my thought. I would, you know, another group that does that, I think they do it really well. Well, two groups, uh, universities and colleges. I mean, if you think about it, there is, especially in American culture, I'm sure it's the same in UK, that feeling of your parents went to college uh, if your parents did go to college, at least for me, my parents went to college, my grandparents went to college. It's that feeling of there is a a family tie to a university. There is, it's a very emotional place and your parents talk about it like, oh, how great it was. And universities use that to their advantage. Um, and they, they, even now, they make sure that students make intentional memories. So later on in life, um, you'll talk about it. I mean, that's kind of the whole idea of student community. Not, It's also a retention thing to make students stay, but also to make memories. So later on, you can donate, especially for private universities. Um, but if you think about it, a lot of that's a big way that they get funding is through donations and their, their marketing that they have to use. This isn't just for universities, but nonprofits, well, let me just finish the universities, is they want you to remember the good times you had. So, but in general, I'm pretty sure I heard a stat that like the most amount of money ever will be being passed down in the next generation. So once uh, boomers die, a lot of money will flood into the market. A lot of their retirement money, their, their money that they saved so long, even uh, so a lot of that money will be passed out and there will be nonprofits trying to get a piece of that. And I think a lot of nonprofits will have to hone in on that nostalgia feel to get them to donate to them. However that looks, I don't know how that will look for, you know, maybe an animal corporation or nonprofit, but definitely for university, that's pretty easy. Healthcare, that that might be semi easy, but they'll make commercials that make that generation feel nostalgic. Probably, that's my guess. It can't just be, oh, you're doing so much good. It has to be another emotion tied into it to get the rest of the money. I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's all. That's my thought about the economics of nostalgia. I probably yeah. Hopefully that made sense. If not, sorry. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. If you're still watching, uh, in the comment, type in the comments, uh, squirrel. Squirrel. Yeah, type that down. Okay. Um, So tomorrow, Emily and I are going to be doing a longer video. Uh, It may not come out till pretty late. We're going to be making uh, a gingerbread house. We're going to be also making... Rice crispy stockings. So the rice krispies in shape of a stocking. And we'll decorate them and just talk. Maybe I think it's it's gonna be called Tuesday tea chats or some Tuesday chats, something something with Tuesday in it, and it's just something we're gonna be doing every Tuesday. So that's what we're doing. Uh we're I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be really fun. So 
yeah if no one's told you this today you are loved this world is a better place because you are here i'll talk to you tomorrow bye